Yo, what's up, Chalagun love for people? Welcome back to my Minion Tic Tac themed inbox. It's been like three months, everybody has missed the toasting sessions. Why not continue right where we left off? I'm gonna talk more about the submission process and rules and crap in the end of the video, so pr b be prepared. Roast, Roast me, Bench. Bench. I'm 18 and I'm looking for advice on what I could do to make my paintings more realistic. I I don't really draw all that often because I'm a photographer by trade and drawing is just a hobby. Okay, so let's take a look. Well, my first impressions are the eye. Is it? Did you just forget to draw it or is it a part of your artistic vision or something? Because it looks like you just forgot it. So my first advice to you is drawing the other eye. It may be difficult, but you can do it. I believe in you. Elsewise, it's just, it's just, I don't understand. There's so many questions. Very difficult. I don't know why I saved this one. Roasted. I hope to be a professional artist in the future. I'm 13 years old and here is one of my finished pieces. Please give an overall critique. Thank you. They appear to be nice. So I'm going to let it slide the overall, overall critique thing because, you know, this this title, the professional artist in the future and this picture, they do actually seem to go together. I think you have what it takes if you're able to shit out something like this at 13 years of age, or rather just do something like this at 13 because I was not even close to this. Or was I? Maybe I was, but when you look at other people's paintings, it always seems more impressive. Yeah, you've got those cool shapes and brush strokes going very organized, sort of a clean style but also somewhat painterly, it's cool. Let's steal the picture real quick. One thing I would personally do is I would extend the canvas a little bit, something like this, so that the character is not so much towards the edge of the thing. I don't know what's going on with that background. It's very undefined, but I guess it works for this piece. Only suggesting a background works fine too. I don't really understand what angle we're looking at the girl at, but you can just do a contour of like white around here where she goes underwater. Paint over these areas that are underwater with that watercolor a little bit. Just simple stuff to make this look more like it's a part of the scene. And and then you can just, I don't know, learn about basic shading. Just push that a little bit further because it's kind of, kind of flat right now. I know you're like 13 and you'll get there eventually, but this is just the general direction you can head in. Just to learn a little bit more about how light affects things. If you want to bring the emotion out a bit more, I would suggest maybe not covering up the face so much with the shoulder. Maybe she's supposed to be like some sort of shy girl or something. Maybe that was a part of the picture, but for more clear readability something like this would be nice yeah you can see the face expression better now when you look at it from afar so yeah that's just what i do with this particular piece but you just wanted overall critique <laughs> so that's what you get warm mood hey charles if you see this i'd love it if you could roast my art i'm still learning how to do backgrounds and would love tips on composition and setting a mood the piece is supposed to feel sad and like the character is missing home but i don't know how well it comes across Thanks. Well, well, well. It comes across a bit. If you know the story, if I wouldn't have read the story beforehand, though, I'm not sure if I would have understood. Well, one thing you can try learning about is how colors affect the mood of a piece. They don't create that moody feeling, that sad feeling. They're kind of look energizing and like healing almost. It creates good feelings. <laughs> so maybe we can use a filter, a curves filter to get to the mood that you want to get to. Now let's uh, take the red channel and let's cut it a bit so it takes those warm colors out makes it like a nighttime shot he's supposed to be missing home so this place this is like a temporary home or something right so maybe maybe we can emphasize the light from outside more than the light from the inside just so that it looks like this home place where he is at right now that isn't important and the outside world is important because that's where the real home is Maybe the light from the inside shouldn't be so warm colored, but rather it would look like something more lifeless, a little bit more grayish to blend in with the wall colors. Also, maybe a little bit of a different kind of framing would work better for this picture because the guy is kind of down here. Maybe we could show a little bit more of what's around him. 
I'm gonna paint in the rest of the background real quick. You wanna make the grand outside seem more appealing. Let's put like stars between these two buildings or something. I think the tightness between these buildings does make it look like he's like confined in there or something. Let's bring attention on the character by vignetting the edges a bit. Make it look like the character and the opening between the buildings is important. Well now it probably just looks like he's enjoying the night sky or something. I don't know. Maybe a better way to show that th the entire scene would just be zooming in on the character a bit more and showing the face expression. Hey, shall I, I did this a few weeks, weeks ago. ago. Hey, my name is Bonnie. I prefer not to say my age, sorry. This is not actually a real species. This is just a creature from a game called Niche. I used anatomy of dogs in the pause, but everything else is just made up. Can you critique me on the rendering of the fur and how the water looks? I don't really understand how to draw water and the lighting underwater is kind of strange. Also, the fish look like shit. I know I was really tired and stopped putting effort in the drawing after a while. From what I can understand a little bit of the head is above the surface level of the water the rest is underwater again you can just add this con white contour thing around the parts where the head is sticking out lighting underwater works a bit differently planes that turn away from the camera start turning into blue very fast you can just use these blue strokes on there that imply that it's fur is it a shark it seems like to have a shark fin or something else so very intense aerial perspective or rather watery-el perspective. You executed this very thing on the fish very well. The, the fishes in the background sort of get washed out into this blue tone that she did and the ones that are closer to the camera have a lot more of their original color. So you can apply the same stuff on the body of the character. I'm just gonna increase the contrast a bit to make this pop more, bring those warm colors of the body out from the blue a bit more. Let's also do a little bit of an extension here. I want to show a bit more the underwater side of things because that's supposed to be a main thing about this image. Now there is more room for the darn fish to come into the scene and to be around the character to make this look more like an immersive scene. Now you can show the tail in its entirety. I see that the tail was supposed to go like this. Well anyway I wouldn't have placed the character's head on top of the water like this. It would have been better if it were just completely underwater in my opinion. These are my thoughts on this p piece. Perhaps, Perhaps some, some tips, tips on light source, source shading. Hey, so I finished this piece yesterday, but I had some struggle with the lighting. The light source comes from the bottom. I think I executed it well on the faces, but I had some issues with the clothing. This was inspired by the American Gothic painting. By the way, I'm 15. Feel free to be harsh. Any tips from Jelly Gundler? I can see what you meant with the clothing. Good job on the faces though. Yeah, you understand which parts of the faces are facing downwards and which are facing upwards so you're able to execute the lighting on the face but you don't have that same kind of knowledge on the forms of the clothing you can just study clothes if this is the kind of art that you want to do these areas are facing the top so they are dark because the light from the bottom doesn't reach that part like this so you just got to think about the big picture first and then move on to shading their actual wrinkles and uh, yeah this part right here has no reason to be light because the light is supposed to be coming from down there you can use more than just two colors to shade you just added flat colors and then put another layer on top of it with a shading color and on just some kind of multiply mode or something and just blended it but after you've done that you can take it further you can go in with more colors also your the contrast between the lights and darks is not very dramatic to have this good lighting effect. They're really close to each other, so spread those out a bit more the same way you did on the face. There's a lot bigger of a contrast on the face. But I guess if you want to draw attention on the face, that's actually good. <laughs> so, But still, though, a little bit more on the clothes wouldn't hurt. So if you just do it like this, if you think about it on a large scale, without thinking about the wrinkles that much, you can establish the shading a lot better. And then after you've established that, you can start thinking about where the wrinkles would be. And just making the bottom of the wrinkles lighter according to the light source and the top of the wrinkles dark. See, even if the forms aren't perfectly executed, you can still understand the direction of the light. Just darken the hell out of that top part. Just the down facing parts, just increase the lightness here. 
with the eyes this highlight that she did would go actually above here and this part would stay dark the lower part because that's sort of inverted however this big old highlight would be on the bottom the one that's usually on the top in anime this character would be even brighter because they're closer to the light and the top would be very dark i'm just gonna do a big old soft light thing and gonna put it on like add mode and very cool i would also darken the background well i'm getting into unnecessary detail now but you can also push the feeling of that light with like a similar gradient so that pushes that bottom light even further so there's all sorts of tricks you can do to push that feeling even though the silhouette of the top character gets lost this way but then you could do like an additional top light well i'm solving problems that i myself created now good work chala toast, toast my art hello i'm 17 and i'm not too too sure what exactly i need to improve on i think light sourcing but i'm not sure any critique would be appreciated oh Darn, what is this that's interesting to say the least? Well, first of all, it would help if you told me what the point or rather the idea behind this piece is so that I could judge this accordingly. So there's there's a girl trapped in a cube of some sort that has trees growing on it directly upwards while the cube itself is tilted well first thing i would do is i would maybe lighten the top part like this so it looks like an actual cool cube maybe i would create a very three-dimensional feeling by creating some aerial perspective or something because to me it kind of looks odd that there's this bright sky there while the background itself is totally white so i would maybe just whiten that background making it look like it's it's a transparent cube i don't know maybe if this is actual critique or my personal taste but yeah i would push the feeling of it being like a small cube because without any other context this is all i can think about i would l lighten the top parts of these trees it's a cool piece though i like it i think it looks fancy oh wow the girl is actually pretty detailed but you need to zoom in really far to see it so maybe i would bring that out a bit more to, to the world to see because you don't really see it when you look at it from how far like this when you look at the big picture so maybe i would take this girl here i would just oh <laughs> i would just grab this girl and i would increase the scale of her like a decent amount yeah something like this i don't know what else to say about this piece I'm just darkening the areas closer to the camera now for the viewer to really bring the girl out a bit more and also to make the aerial perspective more intense and yeah that's that's my two cents about this piece. I don't really know what else to talk about. PA with Macron RS. This pineapple is raw. Help it. I am 19 and from Latvia. Name is Anna. Beep B O L P replay message. You can cook it under low fire or add seasoning. Your choice. Go ham, please. Cry. Alrighty, righty, righty. First things first. Let's get rid of this area that we don't need. You want to make your art look presentable so you don't include that shit. There, I fixed your piece. All right, now I have done some magic. Okay, so I see a little evil character in the background. That's pretty cool. Well, it's uh, this picture is kind of, you can't really tell what the main focus is supposed to be, the character, I think. But there's also these darn rabbits. There's a lot going on. If I were you, I would try to spread out these inks to some areas on the character as well. There's this thick, like, black part of the picture here, but it's really not anywhere else on the picture everything else is just cut filled with pure white so it maybe spread this out a bit more to make it feel more uniform because it kind of feels torn apart into pieces that don't really go together i guess maybe that's what you're trying to say with the piece but if so you can tell me beforehand so i would just maybe try to add some shading on the character or something add like some cool textures on these bricks you can achieve this effect with a half empty marker i used to utilize half empty markers a lot now this is like a gray area where it's 50-50 split between the black and the white and then there's areas that are totally white and then there's areas that are totally black so that's what I meant. 
Just utilize the black more. Roast, Roast my art, you gay. Hey, chal bro, it's pound town tuned. Hey, I know who you are, that's cool. Pulls critique my art. I want critique on how to make my characters more diverse and I want to be able to shade and highlight better, but I can accept any sort of critique my dude, my skin is thick, old mayo. I think it's perfect, love it, cool, I'll check it out. Oh, darn, I... That's already a cool character. It's difficult to say how to improve this because I think it already works for what it is. But when we get a bit more technical, there could be improvements. So I guess that's what you want advice on anyway. First of all, where is the light coming from? I don't know, it's a bit hard to tell because there's like a strong highlight here on this side and then here it's on the top and there it's on this side. So I don't really know what's going on. Again, it's all about making the light source be uniform all over the piece so it looks like it all belongs together so I'm just gonna er erase these highlights that are all from different angles I think for this this is like a sort of a freaky character with a insane face expression and glowy eyes and shit so maybe we should go with the light that would leave all that in shadow emphasize that more so let's do like a top light that like straight from above like an interrogation room or something that covers the eyes and in this case the hat and the hair will be leaving the face in the shadows so yeah then you just think about which parts of the objects are facing the top and you brighten those it always comes back to that 3d thinking it always comes back to that and then also darken the down facing areas god i'm my style doesn't blend at all with this clean style but maybe if you could execute something like this in your style and that would be cool this is kind of fun though they can take in somebody else's drawing like this and turning it into totally something else do a big old toasting on the shale yo i'm 15 and just trying not to suck at art this is a new style for me and i feel as if there is a lot of things wrong with it i don't know it just looks boring and kind of ugly please do a good hosting if you can it's definitely not boring and ugly i think that it's just like details everywhere and not enough definition of actual shapes you could just separate the girl or the character from the very crowded background with this big old black outline that you also put around the eye so why not spread that out a bit more because it does look a little bit just a little bit out of place when it's in just one spot like that if you want to make a line less art art style like this work then you gotta not be afraid to use contrast in your colors because you see it's again it's it's kind of it's kind of the same color it's very close the shadows and the highlights are really close to each other you're, you're just thinking with lines and that's why when you try to do lineless work like this it just doesn't work as well as you'd expect or want so if you want to make this kind of style work you need to figure out where the shadow areas are and just shade them it, again it's it always comes down to this figuring out the actual form of the thing you're trying to draw and then just working according to that so the bottoms of the eyes are not totally bright there think of them as eyeballs they also receive shadow and light from the top and the hair gets darker in parts where it's not receiving any light so you gotta think with light sources and your and the style will magically work you see in this part the hair is starting to go downwards and here it's kind of facing upwards so you lighten it from here it immediately reads better when everything has actual contrast. Toast, toast me like a like fat, fat bagel. Bagels. Hello, Chella. I'm 14 and you wanna get toasted, please. I've reached the point in my art where I haven't really improved in a while. I finish a piece and I'm proud of it. And then the next few days I look at it again and it's ugly. Any help is appreciated at this point. This is the most recent thing I've done. Very bad subject matter, delete now okay i'm joking it has a very nice mood going on very nicely executed colors everything that's in the darkness is very dark and the things that are lit by the lighter or a light so very good so yeah i think even if your brushwork isn't the best and stuff the picture still has a very strong mood which makes it work as a as a whole so very cool now the next thing i would work on is your brushwork it's kind of sloppy and all over the place when you're done with it you can let it 
sit for a few days or something and then just try to come back to it make a new layer on top of it and try like painting on top of it see if you can think of it as not brush strokes and layers that you made but an actual like image of a person smoking a cigarette and just pushing that moonlight on the shoulder here and then you will realize that you can render your own brush strokes further than you thought you could and then you can smooth things out more like this and things will start being cool off also um when the coat is being lit by an orange light in the darkness the light areas don't go to its original blue color but rather gets mixed with this orangish color when there's one colored light source in an otherwise pretty much totally dark place then everything will take on the color of that single light source so i just make the blue more orangish and fade it into pretty much black and then it takes on the color of the moonlight on the shoulders and stuff where it's facing upwards where it's facing that area maybe some liquefaction here on the body let's make it of the same size also let's spread the moonlight out to the dark parts of the hair to bring something into that blackness making it an effective lighting scenario very nice there we go it feels like a classical painting that belongs in a museum now as i said you've got the mood part of it down so if you improve on your brush strokes it will create some very cool stuff all right well i went through like 10 submissions or something in this episode so i think i'm gonna do around that number of submissions in every episode from now on i try to squeeze in as many submissions as i could before but i think that i could help people a bit more if i was a little bit more in depth before i go i'm gonna talk a little bit about the submission process and how you can get in and how to submit and what are the requirements the submission email is roastmyart at gmail.com please read the rules before submitting i'm also going to be going through the rules in a bit submit there then i get your messages in uh, in my inbox there's a lot of them there's like 2000 of them almost very big queue i click on every every one of them though if i see something that i would talk about in an episode or think so i i give it a star and it goes into my start folder so here are all the submissions that are in the queue to be toasted so you can just scan through here you can see the dates on the side here if you don't see your submission in this list here and it was submitted around the same time as these submissions then that means you your submission didn't make it into the start folder also i haven't gone through a lot of the submissions from july and august so far but i'll be doing a more thorough scan soon so if you submit it around that time it's not completely out of the question yeah, if you don't see yourself here, then feel free to resubmit, but please read the rules and please try to guide me at least a little bit. Don't just say overall critique pulls. You can say so, but you lower your chances of getting in. Maybe you can pay to win in the future in this series, but we'll see how it goes because there's a very big queue. A lot of people want to get toasted and I can not toast everybody so increase your chances by knowing what you're looking for advice on and following the rules. Rule number one, please send one image at a time. It doesn't have to be your latest piece, it doesn't have to be your finished piece. Include the age in the message and um, yeah that's, that's pretty much it, just submit and you can resubmit if you didn't see yourself in that list. By submitting to this email address you agree to to be toasted brutally. Peace. Subscribe for more art toasting. Yes, that just happened. I just asked people to subscribe for the first time in the history of this channel.